we get to the intelligence part of artificial intelligence. Our favorite neuroscientist, Dr. Brain, can't explain. You've probably seen stories about artificial intelligence or machine learning, but how do scientists and engineers hope to actually create machines capable of thinking? The answer has to do with your brain. Hi, I'm Dr. Brain. Okay, my real name is Crystal Dilworth, but I have a PhD in neuroscience, which is easier to call me Dr. Brain. So, I'm Dr. Dr. Brain. Brain! To make computers actually capable of thinking or complex pattern recognition, researchers look for inspiration from the most powerful biological computer we know, the human brain. Even if these computer neural networks are inspired by our organic neuronal networks, we have a long way to go before we can replicate a human brain. So what does our brain do better than a computer? Two big ones, neuroplasticity and pattern recognition. You can see how this library of memory is developed when a toddler does something like call every single bird they see a duck. Our brain retains the general attributes of many things that we've seen and experienced in our life and can quickly pull up a close match. So even if we've never seen a fox, our brain sees four legs, a snout, and fur, a nose. It's kind of like a dog. It's why sometimes a website will check if you're human by asking which photos have bikes. It's something that we can do without thinking, but a normal computer program will struggle. AI wants what we have so badly. She's so jealous. Another of our brain advantages is neuroplasticity. This allows us to process new information and stimuli and leads to the human's incredible behavioral flexibility. For example, for most of history, no human held or used a touchscreen phone. But today, billions of us can type to our friends or share memes without giving it a second thought. Behavioral flexibility. Building and training our neuronal pathways also lets us do new things like learn more languages, master the electric guitar, or whistle with our fingers. I might still be building the neuronal pathways for that one. On the other hand, computers are normally given a set list of instructions to take care of in order. These instructions, or algorithms, can be incredibly complicated, but they're missing the adaptability of our complex web of neurons. So if you wanted a neural network to recognize birds, you would give them different bird images over and over. Then you'd look at the outputs and tell the program when it did a good job of seeing birds and when it didn't see birds. Over time, it will learn to adjust the weight of its calculations to improve its accuracy and hopefully become an expert bird spotter. Researchers are hoping computer neural networks can help us tackle complex problems in chemistry, medicine, and even astrophysics. And they're already being used to improve things like autonomous driving and language translation. But one issue with trying to replicate the human brain is that our brains are really complex. Like, really, really, really complex. Neuroscience has come a long way, but there are a lot of things that we don't know and a lot of things that we don't know we don't know. Man, that's a lot of neuroscience we need to do. I hope they don't mind that it took a few minutes to come to do the show today. Bye. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.